All right, folks, there you go. Not perfect by any means, but good enough for who they're for. Uh, we've got some cleaning up to do on this one to try to get it looking decent because I'm probably going to leave it rough. And then uh, this one here, all we got to do is uh, clean up a little bit on the sides, nothing major. And then uh, we'll have to uh, machine top and bottom because it's going to be thinner in this course. And then machine our hole out of the center. And uh, we'll drill it out and machine it out and then we'll uh, try to get the corners sharp like we need them. Uh, this will eventually bolt on top of that. That's the plan. All right, let's get to machining. All right, folks, here we are. Uh, got this piece machined off. A little frosty in the center, but it's got to cut out anyway, so I didn't want to go any more. Uh, that'll give us plenty of depth. Uh, I may take it down some more, pour it over with. And this I'll probably take down more. Now I ended up, I need to fix my mistake here, but I ended up going on and machining this off and cutting it. Even though I didn't want to, but I did it anyway because it had too much sand porosity in one spot where I poured it in. It's still got some little spots there, but I'll probably come back in here and try to fix that. You know, worst comes to worst, I can melt back off and redo it because this needs to come down anyway. I need to make this about half as thick as it is. Anyway, so that's that. We'll keep working on it. Uh, why did I use brass bronze instead of cast iron? Well, I can't melt cast iron. I could probably melt it but I've got a steel crucible and you don't want to melt uh, cast iron in a steel crucible and I didn't have a graphite never I've never bought one so um, and this would have been uh, a little better if I'd have you know took more time and made the the patterns better and all that good stuff but I wasn't too worried about it we're just trying to machine it and by the time we're done with it it'll look fine and and uh, we may I don't know what we're gonna do yet but leave most of this rough rough around the sides and then uh, once it's just collared you know it won't look as bad either so anyway so I've got to cut out this shape that size it's got to fit down over it and then uh, of course I've got a piece right here that I'm going to use this is just another old piece of a casting that we poured and this will be our decup valve and then uh, like I said the cover so we'll keep machining at it see if we can get her all finished up and done and try to get it straight and on there and looking like it should look and uh, we'll go from there all right I spent a lot of time machining on this thing uh, this stuff is so hard it's just crazy I got to learn how to mix it a little bit different maybe more aluminum or more copper or I don't know we'll have to figure it out so uh let me see so this is going to fit on there i've still got to straighten the corners out but that's going to go on there uh, i may narrow it up more i don't know we'll see uh we've got to get this set up because we've got a rod that comes up through the bottom of it to the d-cup valve we need to go ahead and build the d-cup valve all right folks i figured i got another one to show you and this one's a little older it is a challenger got the 6.4 hemi SRT and uh, as you can see it has had it so this is what happens when you run from the, the police and the craziest thing is is there was uh, a Dodge Charger a white one that was also with this one running from the police and they both wrecked at the same place they didn't hit each other but they went into a car lot a new car lot and this one went through the ditch and then uh, it rolled all over the place and then it ended up in the in the parking lot between the office and the uh, car wash uh, at the dealership but uh, luckily didn't hit anything the other car did hit a, a car and it was a used car it wasn't a new one and then uh, tore up some other stuff but nothing real major but I mean tore the car up real bad but anyway there you go okay folks been working on an LS swap and uh, I have decided today I'm going to go back onto this and mess with it some. And a little steam engine trying to get <laughs> the steam chest made. Uh, I made this stuff way too hard and having trouble machining it. It was a job. It took a few hours to get this hole out. Just crazy as can be. Now I've got to square the, the corners up and we're going to remake this because I wanted it to be rough on the front. And we're going to use this to make 
the D cup valve. So we're going to get started on it. D cup valve is going to be pretty short, just enough to cover the exhaust port and the intake port. Uh, and then when you move, it covers the other side. So we'll get started on it. All right, folks. So we've got a lot of this machine to uh, got some more to do, of course, but I'm trying to get it down to size. And as you can see, this port's uncovered. And when it moves this way, about the time that this port covers, this one's becoming uncovered. And that's how you want it to work. So we've got to do some machining on the top of it. We've got to actually machine out a uh, cup inside of it. So when it's covering, let's say, these two ports, it's leaving this one open for steam to come in. But it needs to leave it open for steam to come out this port come up through the inside of this valve that we're making or KD cup and then come back down into the exhaust cylinder and our exhaust port and then it exhausts out then it does the same thing when it moves it moves this way puts pressure on this side which puts pressure on top of the piston pushes the piston down when it pushes it down the steam comes out this port and then comes up through our D cup and then there and then comes out through the exhaust on the side so that's how simple the valve system is on these. Alright. Okay folks, we put stuff back together just enough to get a measurement of a distance for our steam chest for where we need our actual uh, rod at or a hole in the bottom of our steam chest for our rod to go through. And then we've got to make a piece for a packing also. But uh, it's going to be pretty close. We can always space this out if we need to. But uh, we'll we'll figure it out here. Okay, as for our D cup valve, now you can see how I made it, and what's going to happen is, is there'll be two little washers on it, of course, and this will be threaded farther with two nuts on top, two nuts on bottom, that way we can uh, actually jam nut it in place because this needs to stay a little bit loose inside here, and that way the pressure of the steam pushes this in against the uh, the actual uh, surface. So. That's how it works. So that's quarter inch. So we can use a quarter, you know, just use this and uh, we'll use a packing inside. Okay, as you can see inside it's tapered and then it's also tapered in there. So if I get a good piece of small packing around there, when you tighten it, it'll actually force it in on this shaft. It'll work just like it's supposed to. So that's the plan with that and uh, everything else is slowly coming along. Okay, folks, so when I cast this, I was going to film it, and my leg, my leg was in the way of the camera, believe it or not, so I didn't do it. So we are going to, we're regrouping. I cracked this thing. I was drilling it, or I drilled it, and then I was tapping it, and I knew that it was kind of tight, and I should have known better. This stuff's so hard, and I cracked it, and I'm not even going to take a chance on it because, you know, once it heats, it'll expand open and leak. And uh, so we're going to recast this. We're going to cast it out of some softer material. Never was that happy with it anyway, so it's not a big deal. And I'm going to recast the, uh, the top plate for it too. And uh, let's see. It was going to work out fine, but you know, like I said, I'd rather do it and be a little bit more happy with it. The D cup valve, believe it or not, was softer than this. And I think it had more copper, maybe less aluminum. I'm going to do some research tonight and try to figure out how I can soften this up a little bit because I got it too hard. Um, it's just hard. I mean, it's hard as a rock. It's not like a, a brass or a bronze or normally, or a, well, let's put it that way. It's not like copper or brass where, where it's soft, you know, you ding it or whatever. I mean, it's just rock hard. So we're going to start over with this. I mean, it don't take a, you know, long at all to cast it anyway. It takes longer to machine it, but if I make it softer, it won't machine so hard. Um, so, you know, you mess up and you start over. So, wasn't happy with it anyway, so it don't really matter. Okay, folks, it's about dark, but I have done some research. And we're going to re-pour tomorrow and try to get this figured out. I think I know what I've done. This last melt when I've done this... I was in a hurry because I was getting kind of low on uh, propane and I had some copper in there with it that was some copper square ingots. Well copper melts at a higher temperature than brass so what happened was is uh, I actually reached in there with uh, some tongs and took the uh, copper out so I could go ahead and pour 
and I didn't wait long enough for that copper to melt in there with the brass. So I really think that my brass content, it don't have enough copper in it to make it malleable or softer. And I think that's what it is. I mean, you can, uh, I know you can anneal this, you know, but it's still, when like this part here was way softer, this was way more copper. I know that for sure. And this is just hard as a rock. So I'm going to try to re-pour and we'll go from there and see what happens. We're going to do this one thinner. It don't really need to be that thick. All right, so it's a lot more copper than that. As you can see, I didn't have enough to fill the other one. I was kind of worried about that, but now we got to hope that one's good. It's a lot thinner than the other, but we'll try it and see. All right, I'm going to let them cool a little bit, and then I'm going to quench them in water because uh, that's supposed to, uh, believe it or not, works the opposite of steel. Steel, you'd quench in water to harden it. Supposedly, it softens it, help anneal it, and... Uh, We'll see, but uh, I think or hope they'll turn out. But that's hot now. That is, uh, that's definitely was hot. I could feel it on my legs bad. I need to get me a uh, leather apron or something here. Anyway, there you go. We'll see what happens. All right, all right. So that don't have, that one don't have to be very thick at all. Just thick enough to make a cover. So let's hope. Oh yeah, I think the thickness wise it's just fine. Huh. It did not didn't do worth a crap, did it? No, didn't feel. Cooled down too much I believe when I poured it. Okay. We should have to do some more, won't we? We still may uh, test this. Put a little water there. We'll test it and see how hard it is. Now to give us a good idea. I mean, even if, even if uh, we do have to report cover, like I said, that'll be a good test. Yeah, that's looking good so far. Yeah, you know, it'd be nice to preheat molds, but I didn't do it. I just evidently didn't have it hot enough. So far, this is looking really good, though. This turns out to be soft, like we want it. We can work with that real, real easy. You know how hot we made this water. Mm, kind of hot. Yeah, that's shameful. Definitely gonna have to be worked on. All right, we don't want to pick this one up. Oh. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll see how it all turns out. Okay, folks, decided to do a file test, and you won't be only be able to uh, 
see the difference, but you can actually hear the difference. Uh, let me get set up where I can do this and film at the same time. There you go, I had to put my foot on it. So, you may be able to hear this. And it's not leaving much of a mark. You can move to this one. And it's moving, it's leaving a good mark. So. Different. Get a little powder from that one. You should get pieces from that one. So definitely softer. So should be able to machine it easier. It looks more brass, but way more copper in it for some. Makes it look looks different, doesn't it? All right, folks. This one milled so much easier, and it worked out really well. Got it threaded in. And there is our going to be our new. Part of our new linkage, I'm going to have to thread it down like I said, put two nuts on each side, so that's going to work. And we can remelt that. Uh, and I'm going to have to make a new cover, but like I said, uh, more copper is what really done it. I did add some pennies with some zinc. <clears throat> so between the two, I think that took care of it. So we know now, and uh, we'll. Uh, Start trying to get this thing together here soon. Be nice to uh, be able to get it together and run it. So there's the exhaust, and I'll do the intake on the opposite side. And uh, still got to drill and tap it one one place. So, all right, appreciate everybody watching, and we'll do the cover and get all that done next time. All right, bye.